Hey, welcome to the Glengower Podcast, sponsored by Mission Blueprint. Do you remember the saying, what you see is what you get? When it comes to this world, that might not be true. No, I love the band Styx from the 1980s. I love the song Babe, um, Too Much Time in My Hands. I love that song. But there's another song called The Grand Illusion. This song refutes the adage by saying, what you see is not what you get. It's all an illusion. Let's recap what we've been talking about. This is a series called The Four Marks of Marx. God, knowing our first parents would fall, developed an organized approach to bring about a saving vehicle we know as the church, the Christian church. It starts with one holy couple, that's Adam and Eve. Continuing with one holy family with Noah. This movement grows to one holy tribe with Abraham. One holy nation with Moses, now really big to one holy kingdom with David. And finally, one holy universal church started by Jesus Christ himself. Marxism intends to destroy this by first destroying the family, i.e. the Christian family. Look at the Bolsheviks in 1917, what they did. Two, after they destroy the family, destroy the right to private property. As Dennis said last week, this web grows from family to private property. Three, destroy religion. And four, destroy the nation. Today, we will discuss destroy religion. Let's start in the Bible, John chapter 10. Jesus says, the devil, the evil one, comes to kill, steal, and destroy. How does he do that? Well, he first does that by um, appearing to people and slaying them, right? <laughs> Wrong. If he did that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we would run to Christ. It'd be obvious. He does this in a different way. You see, he is the great magician. He's great at illusion, taking the created and making it seem something different. Okay, let's go deeper with that. Let's go to the garden. Adam and Eve, we know, before they sinned, called the original sin, they had what is called the preternatural gifts. They are defined as this. Favors granted by God, above and beyond the powers or capacities of the nature of that receives them, but not beyond those of all created nature. Right? Adam and Eve were superhumans. Now, these preternatural gifts include infused knowledge. They were brilliant. Original holiness, no sexual lust. Impassibility, no pain or suffering. And immortality, they live forever. These superhumans were tricked. Satan created an illusion of that tree they were supposed to stay away from. All of a sudden, in this dialogue, Eve got in with the serpent. Um, she got confused. She started misquoting God. Now, how does she do that? How does she misquote such a very, very important piece of information that is, don't eat from that tree or you will die? A spiritual death. They didn't physically die, but they did die spiritually. But she misquoted God. And then she brought her husband in, who's supposed to be the protector of this garden. Where the heck was he at, right? So they bring the husband in, and he sees that the tree all of a sudden is good for food. And why wouldn't we? And God's trying to hide something from us. This same God who created us out of his love, out of his kindness, who's been faithful, he's trying to hide. See, they buy into this illusion, and they committed that first sin. And then what happened? Boom. Their eyes were opened. Just like that. And they realized they have done something terribly, terribly wrong. Brothers and sisters, if Adam and Eve, who had the preternatural gifts of knowledge, holiness, impassibility, immortality, if they can be tricked, don't you think you and I can be tricked? Of course we can. And I suspect we are being tricked right now. 
So my wife is watching a, a video. I haven't seen it, but she was describing it to me. Maybe you have seen it. This professor put um, either on his blackboard or probably in a slide and said, what circle is bigger? There was a green one and a blue one, two circles. Which one is bigger? Well, the class was analyzing and looking and, you know, they all chose sides. And then he said, they're the same exact size. What was the point? The point is you can be easily tricked. That's the point. And I wonder if this is the grand illusion that we're living in. Are we all being tricked in some ways? And what means, what avenue, what ways, what are we all doing at the same time that would allow us to be tricked? Is it watching a screen? Hmm, I wonder. So welcome to the grand illusion. Dennis. Hi, this is good, man. This is good topic. Yeah, uh, it, it's so interesting, the world we live in today. Uh, how do you know what is true and false? How do you discern all that? And, you know, if you're going to destroy religion, most people think, you know, you start bombing cathedrals like the French Revolution, uh, World War II, and, uh, kill the Christians and, but you know what? That didn't work for the French, did it? Well, we've gotten smarter over time. We we know that things like that used to work, but they don't work now. We're smarter, but are we? Well, you know, when you begin um, killing Christians, there's this thing that happens in the early part of the church. Uh, these young people even saw older people die for Christ. And there's something happens there. And it took probably 1800 years for the bad guys in this overall story to realize when you murder Christians, more step up, you can't get rid of them. Like the Hydra. So there's a different way that you have to get to Christianity, to kill Christianity, to kill religion. Yeah, ignore it. Well, <laughs> you think that works? Well, you think about what happens with our young people when they go to church now. They go through catechism. They go through religious education. They get to be freshmen, sophomore, juniors, seniors in high school. And yeah. as soon as mom and dad's insistence of showing up to church every Sunday goes away, what percentage actually seek it out for themselves? You're right. Ignore it. Yeah. Yeah, just ignore it. Like, you know, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, nobody else goes. I mean, we go once in a while. I mean, you don't have to have a relationship. I mean, it's one of those things. Give it. Give them an hour, like once a month or so. Pray when you need something because you need it. Another other times, don't worry about it. Well, in this context, the parents started ignoring it. Of course, they modeled it. So they started ignoring, well, the priest, the pastor, they said something we didn't like. Maybe it convicted them. Maybe it made them mad. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to walk away. We're going to show them. I'm totally guilty of it. Yeah. I, I did it in my younger years. The whole parable about how you're, you're supposed to tithe and what you're supposed to give. I would get so angry about a pastor bringing that particular context up in our church and what they would make it about making and raising money for the church, not about, hey, you've been blessed with a ton of gifts and that it's right to use the gifts you've got to help those who don't um, in a non-forced way. It just would rub me wrong. And I've left on more than one church because I disagreed with the pastor's just interpretation of one parable of scripture so dumb so immature well that's just it you know when we're younger we tend to be more what's the word i don't want to use the word liberal because people think of politics but we tend to be more free we want to do whatever we want to do no one's going to tell me what to do maybe rebellious is a better word yeah and then we get older we kind of come to our senses and realize you know that pastor actually might have been right and i might have been wrong and what was i thinking but this is part of the growing thing right well they talk about us as teenagers we know everything about everything we know I did. Yeah. And then you start to age and then you start to realize that there's some things that I didn't know that I didn't know. And then you finally reach a point in life where there's this, oh my gosh, there's a whole world of things I don't even know that didn't even know that I didn't even know existed. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know anything about them. So then it's like, wow, I'm really small. Like I'm but a speck of dust. Yeah. If you really want to feel small, take a philosophy class. Half the time I'm... 
I'm saying to myself, what in the heck are they talking about? Because you're sitting in the front and the professor is starting to say a few things and you're in, you got, you got an officer. Where'd they go? And they're still having a conversation. You have no idea what they're talking about. And for modern times, I would say get on Google Earth and just pick a random spot in the world and get on the road, like go down to Street View and look at the shops that are visible or the things that are visible and go, yeah, I've never been there. I have no idea what the people are like. I don't know what it smells like. I don't know what the food tastes like. I, I, I don't know. How, why are they there? How long have they been there? What's their ancestry? Who are they? I was like, oh, well, I guess nobody cares about me that much. You know, when I'm younger, I used to think everybody was worried about what I wore or what I did. And, you know, now it's like, I mean, if people gave a half a thought about anything, so now take that all the way to their faith. Like, it's just ignore it. What was important is the Ralph Lauren cologne. Do you remember that cologne? Oh, yeah. I really like it, but oh. I know nothing about Ralph Lauren. Our listeners can send us bottles at. <laughs> yeah, if you want. Well, let's go back. Let's get into this grand illusion thing because, you know, I've got a hundred ways to take this. Now, you heard about flat earthers a while ago. I'm not a flat earther, uh, but they make some very, very interesting points. I think there's some merit here. Well, let's make a distinction real quick because this we're not talking open-minded like, oh, I'm just I'm open to all concepts of the world. An open mind means I'm willing to let information come to me and analyze it and discern it and logic through it on my own, through prayer, through discernment, and then make a decision. Or have my foot leaning one way or the other. Right. Yeah. I love the whole objectivity thing because truth is something that's outside of us, right? I don't determine what truth is. It determines me. So I have to figure out what is the truth. It's getting everything out of the way, right? Say that one more time. Say what one more time? What is truth? Truth is outside of us. I think you and I debated about this we a little did. bit. Yeah, we, we did, did, but I like this point, so yeah. I want to make sure our listeners get it. Yeah, truth is outside of us. And, you know, in philosophy, they say you just got to get pull everything out of the way to get to what it is so it can transform you. I don't dictate what truth is. It dictates me and what I believe. I have to fall in line with the truth. So it's important to be a truth seeker. If you're going to be a truth seeker, you have to be open to different points of the view. I don't agree with the flat earthers. And but you, can't, you can't show up at the table with a decision. That's right. So I, I heard um, a flat earth perspective. Now, this is in the context of the grand illusion. There is something that we are buying into right in front of us that isn't real. The flat earthers say this, and I think it's interesting. They would say NASA is trying to do one thing. Hide God. Now, hear this point of view. It's fascinating. If the earth is truly a globe, okay, this is what the flat earthers say. If it's truly a globe, and in this universe, there's hundreds, maybe thousands of galaxies, and and um, there's all kinds of things, you know, there's planets and dwarf planets and stars and and who knows, there's other people living on other planets somewhere. And they create this perception of a whole, uh, another uh, reality. Where is God? You see, he might be out there. He might not be out there. And if he, he might be way out there so far, he doesn't even care about us. Hence, we conclude maybe there is no God. You see where they're going? Absolutely. Absolutely. So if there is no God, then religion doesn't matter. You're free. You and I are free to create our own truth, create our own guidelines, our own rules. We can do whatever the heck we want. So the, the flat earthers would say, they would counter that, counter that by saying, actually, there is a firmament. And thousands of people have bought into this firmament. God is literally two to three hundred miles straight up and that's where his kingdom is so i okay they are saying there's this grand illusion there's this illusion created by some really really bad guys which it, it takes quite an administration or how do you administer all these people how do you get all these people to fall in line 
uh, believing the same thing, right? Although I think it's possible some say the Manhattan Project did just that. 35,000 people knew what was what they were cooking and they couldn't say a word or maybe a bullet to the head. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But there's this grand illusion. So here's what I'm trying to do, and I'm going to throw it back to you. I'm creating a possibility here. (laughs) I don't believe the flat earthers have got this right. Now, they are questioning the, the globe. That's not the point. The point isn't whether there is a flat earth or a firmament. The point is, is it possible to create an illusion where people buy into it and they won't even, they believe it and they won't even question it. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, let's, let's move away from the flat earth concept. Let's just talk about what the hottest trend in video gaming is now. Do you know what it is? I I know nothing about video games. So hottest trend. um, I have no idea. Called VR. VR. Virtual Virtual reality. reality. Okay. Isn't that the quintessential illusion? It's virtual reality. It's not reality, but yet you can put goggles on and headphones on and you can disappear into your own digital world. Short of having to use the bathroom and consume some calories, you can live outside of the real world as long as mom and dad pay the bills and keep the lights on for you to live without this world. Virtual reality. Have you put the goggles on? I have not. I have not. I haven't either. They they look really interesting, but I just I'm a techie guy, and I just I know better than to go play with things that will get me really excited and uh-huh. fascinated and distracted from the things I need to do. Yeah, if I put those goggles on, I'm buying some. Absolutely. And I I don't go into guitar stores. I've said this earlier. I can't go because I figure out a way to buy a new guitar. So it's been years. Since I've been in, in a guitar store, I mean, like over 20 years, because I just, I mean, I have been in to buy picks and I just get in and get out. I don't even look because it's like, ah, it's like cocaine, oh, right? Right. I'm, the, I'm, the way, I'm that way with gun stores. I don't, I, I don't go into them unless I know I'm going to get something because I'm not leaving without something. Another way that illusion is created is really television. Our phones. Yeah. What do you think? How uh, do the phones create illusions? So illusions in there. Um, that that's more important than my wife. The illusion that that's what the information there is more important than what my kids have to tell me about their day. Yeah. Um, more important than getting something else in my life done, whether it's mowing the lawn or shoveling snow or just getting something done. And then I get to the end of the day, I'm just like, oh, I didn't have time for that. Oh, I, I, no, that's an illusion. That is an illusion and a lie you tell yourself because you want to justify your immature actions and rationalize what you know you did wrong. Yeah, not to get too much into the weeds, but immature actions. For example, you can say whatever you want to say without any kind of what? Consequence. Consequence. That's exactly. You can say what you want. Here's the other illusion that you go on. Facebook is, people aren't going, doing Facebook anymore, but they're doing others like, uh, again, I'm not techie. I'm TikTok. Not, TikTok. Instagram is still, it's kind of getting old already, but Instagram and you can friend someone. So this illusion that you have all these friends, but who don't know you. Right. They follow you. You have followers. Yes. Yeah. Like Jesus. You have your own <laughs> followers. Yeah. You're so important. People follow you. It's all an illusion. But it's, it's the narrative they tell you to make you feel important. It's just, it's so unbelievably hard to stomach that we're so all self consumed that what we do matters. And very few of us are going to do something that will last a legacy. All the, ba- all the men who battled in at the great battles of Greece, whose name do we recall the most? We named it after our heel. Oh, Achilles. Yeah. Ach- Achilles yeah, yeah, yeah. heel. I mean, how many kings from the old times do we recall as being great leaders? Maybe, maybe a King Henry. I mean, there was like 19 of them. I don't know. I mean, we don't, we don't do anything that's significant in life or history that's worth it. Yeah, there used to be real, uh, I'll use the word vocation maybe improperly, but some careers were higher than others. You know, um, you're a doctor. Doctors are one of them. Doctors, lawyers, teachers. Uh, there's a word for that. I can't remember what the word is. I still have a little brain fog from the old, you know, 
being sick last fall. Virtual reality. Uh, so yeah, exactly. But now we get into things that um, I think would be classified as they're not real jobs. No, they're entertainment. Yeah, sports. They're not real jobs. That's an entertainment, yeah. but that also creates the icon of a false idol mm-hmm. because now we now it's more important to go put our jersey on and sit in front of the TV for four hours and watch a game than go to church for an hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, again, good question. I, I digress a little bit. How many people on Sunday, we don't know the answer, how many people on Sunday spent that whole day watching football but did not go worship God that weekend? It would be a scary number, I would imagine. Scary percentage. And if you don't worship God, you worship something else. Yourself, generally. Oh, that's yes. this your is own the, self-interest. This is the whole illusion thing, is it, it it comes about you. See, again, the reason why I said Satan doesn't appear with this with a sword or a knife to cut people up. No, that would be his job would be terrible because you'd everyone would run the Christ, right? But he gets you to do what? Get your eyes off of Yahweh and put them on yourselves. That's what he did in that first rebellion in heaven. And that's what he's trying to do. And this, this is what the whole illusion is all about. Get your eyes off of God and get them on yourself. I really saw that happen with the selfie movement. Now, when the selfie movement started, and you could buy your own selfie sticks and the sticks got better. And when I saw that, that's when my discerning skills went, uh-oh. This is, if not demonic, <laughs> right next door to the demonic because all eyes are on me. Mm-hmm. Thoughts? Yeah, exactly right. I mean, I'm one of the guys that had a selfie stick. I had a selfie stick that had a little little pressure point at the end. and It'd take pictures for you. You didn't have to set the timer or anything. Cool. It was great. But you're right. Like All of those things lead into that breakdown of religion and that illusion. Think how many people go to a Hollywood production. How many people log on to Amazon, Netflix, Amazon Prime, you know, um, Redbox, and will spend hours in front of a television or TV screen, but won't pick up a book, won't have a philosophical discussion about their thoughts, their opinions, being open, having an open mind about the world they live in. They just want to be entertained. Feed me, entertain me, entertain me, feed me, feed me, entertain me. So one of the mistakes people make is... Computers are evil in themselves, or TVs, no. But it's how we administrate them. It's how we use them. It's like the the what we talk about. The money is the root of all evil, right? <laughs> no, oh, it's not. D- what did I miss? Uh, something really, really big. And I know you know. <laughs> the love of money. The love of money. The love of self. The yes. love now becomes what builds that that wall between you and Christ. You and your you and your eternal life. So you're gonna let it keep happening. Are you gonna allow these illusions? So give me some thoughts on how you would, Glenn, for our listeners, break through illusions. Ask the question: Is it true? Is this true? It's one of the things I do with my kids. You know, when they get in these fights or someone says something about them, so and so called me fat. So, so what is the truth? That's the first question you ask: Is what is true here? That's the first thing. Um, I was going to bring up this earlier. Ooh. I, I'm a huge U2 fan. <sighs> you like U2? U2. Oh, yeah. There you go. One of my favorite songs is, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. You haven't? I have climbed. Okay, I'm going to cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> but you haven't found what you're looking okay, for? Okay, so this song is fantastic. Great, great lyrics. They themselves would say it's really a gospel song. Oh, praise, praise the Lord. Amen. Now... I would call this an illusion. Now, people say, you you go too far. Um, you know, these are great lyrics. But here are the lyrics. I have climbed the highest mountains. I have run through the fields only to be with you, only to be with you. I have run, I have crawled, I have scaled these city walls, these city walls only to be with you. But, see that word but? Mm-hmm. But I still haven't found what I'm looking for, okay? So he goes through, you know, I've spoke with tongues of angels. I've had, held the hand of the devil. He keeps going. I, I believe in the kingdom come. All oh, that other colors bleed. But in the end, he says, oh, here's the, you broke the bonds and loosed my chains, carry the cross of my shame of my shame. It seems like it's really a gospel Christian. Song. Who carried the cross? Christ did, right? Mm-hmm. But I still haven't found what I'm looking for. 
What is he talking about? I think he's still trying to find God in all this, and he hasn't found it yet. He's gone to the mountaintops and looked for God's beauty. He's he's run through the fields and looked for God's grace and presence. He's held the hands of angels, and he's he's still not found God. There's another take. That oh, was that was okay. totally my belief. Okay, I want to hear yours. A couple years ago, here's a possibility, and I'm I so hope I'm wrong. He's done all these things. He realizes that this guy carried the cross for my shame. But in the end, I still haven't found what I'm looking for because there is no God. I don't believe. That's what he said. I don't believe. That's right. He doesn't believe. I don't know what the answer is, but now, again, someone who wants to be objective, you have to be open to the truth here. What is he really saying in this song? Now, if anybody other than our listeners knows YouTube and would like them to have uh, the opportunity to rebuttal, our lines are open. Yeah, I, prove me wrong. I can... Easy, well, I, don't, I don't want to say easily shift my position, but if, if you have a better explanation, make more sense out of this, I'll fall in line with it. But at this you point, you have an open mind. I have an open mind. That's right. So I still, again, is what you could take from the song is all of it's an illusion. The guy who carried the cross, you know, I've tried to run through fields and I realized it's all an illusion and there's nothing there. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Hmm. Very interesting. It is very interesting. So now I wonder, so here's what I'm wondering. Some people think I have a conspiratory mind. No, I just like to think about things. I know there's an enemy. Satan is the enemy in his dominions. And I know he has people on earth who fully align with him, who worship him, uh, and they come from the line of Cain. These people in the world today are creating all kinds of distractions, which I will call illusions. Just like on Facebook or Instagram, you have friends. How in the hell can you have friends on? How, how in the hell can you have 10,000 friends in Instagram? It's not even possible. So all of these things, again, this smartphone, I've got a Apple SE. I decided why pay a grand when I can get almost everything I want right here anyway, you know, but I've got an Apple SE phone. Um, I don't have any more friends than you do. You may have 10,000. I may have one. It's all an illusion. The phone isn't the problem. It's our immaturity. It's our lack of discerning skills. Go ahead. And we just get distracted by it. We get notifications like, oh, somebody liked something I put on my wall. Ooh, thumbs up. Emoji. Now, did you did you know of anyone when these smartphones came out? Now, you're a, a BlackBerry guy. That's where, you I, were. That's where I got my roots started. I was a BlackBerry guy. <sighs> I, day. I, somebody gave me a BlackBerry. I, I thought it was the greatest thing, oh, man. Oh, man. And, I've always, and I haven't always been an Apple guy, but I bought a... Um, uh, what what was that computer? Um, it wasn't an Apple, and it had Vista operating oh, system. Yep, yep, yep. And I absolutely hated it. So I bought my first Mac, and I went, "Whoa, these guys are way ahead of everybody else." Welcome to the dark side. Yeah, but you can't build your own Mac. I don't. Or I don't want to build a Mac. I want to buy a Mac. You right. know, people want to build them. Go build them. I wish I could build a Mac that had. I wish I could build a computer that I could get OS ten. I'm digressing. Anyway, um, so <laughs> distractions discernment. With the phone. There, there were people who were holding out and wouldn't get a smartphone. I remember those people. My parents are one of those people. Yeah, and there's still a few left, but generally, we've all bought into this. And you can't leave home without it because, Dennis, something might happen. Right, or you might need to ask Google something or, hey, Siri. Uh-huh. <laughs> But this goes back to the story that leads off in John, which I think is so incredible. I don't know if you remember this particular one, but he talks about, very truly I tell you, I am the gate of the sheep, for whom all come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate, whoever enters me will be saved. They will come and in and go out and find pasture. The thieves come only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come and they may have life and have it and full. And this just whole parable talks about how the sheep come to the sound of the voice of the shepherd. And many sheep know 
a robber's voice. They they don't go towards a stranger, yet they can be deceived and distracted and miss the call. And at the end, there's only going to be a few that held out for the real shepherd. Scary. But it's true. Like, I'm, I'm just as guilty as anybody listening. I'm distracted. I get wrapped up in the world. I get wrapped up in the... Oh my goodness, it was just Olympics and oh, did you hear about the drama and the thing? And yeah, I get caught up in it too. And I can't go live in a hole. I can't go bury myself in my, under my blankets. I got a I got a job to do. I got work to do. But this is why we're here too. We're here with you, our listeners, that we want to be part of your discerning conversations. We want to be the ones that Hey, did you hear on that podcast today, we're talking about virtual reality and how that can be really distractive to our kids and our family. Do you think that's a good Christmas present to get our kids? You know, let's let's make this conversation come to life in your living room and at your kitchen tables or in the car while you drive to work. One of my favorite stories, I bought Judah a, an iPod. I bought one of those Nanos. You know, they're about one inch by mm-hmm. one four inches or yeah, something. Three little inches. Guys. Yeah. Yep. And so I was really excited to get him this iPod. He opens it up and says, what is it? It's an iPod. What's an iPod? And I thought, we might be doing something right here. We actually might be doing something right in our household. He didn't know what an iPod was. So I said, you can play music, you can have books on it. It's, it's wonderful. You can play videos. I don't want to play videos. Okay, great. And so he opens his iPod. He start, he's looking at the iPod, and it's got a section for games. And he says to me, how do I get these off the iPod? I said, I don't know if you can. And I couldn't figure out. I don't think you can get those games off. Nope. He wanted them off. Built-in distraction. Yes. Uh, and so that's really what all this is about, right? Illusions, built-in distractions. And so the point with the smartphones is we are all... What? What do you think? What's the point? What point am I trying to make here? I'm guessing we're all human. We're all weak. We're all lost. We're all, I don't know. I got all caught up in the iPod conversation. I'm just like, oh, is this the grand illusion? Is this what the enemy really wants us to have? Something that we don't need, that we pay a lot of money for, and we can live without. Listen. Pay a lot of attention to. Mm-hmm, that's right. I mean, how many times a day? Now, I, this this is an old stat. Mm-hmm. So you'll probably get this right because you're kind of attuned to a lot of these things. But how many times a day do you look at your phone? Th- this is probably a four-year-old stat now. Oh, boy. So I, I don't know. It might not be right. What, what's your guess? Oh, I would say 120, 130 times. Yeah, about 150 times a day. Now you want to know something really scary? Uh, I'm not sure. Go ahead. The Guess the number of times an average employee will check their email an hour. <laughs> This is an official Mission Blueprint fat check. Excuse me, fact check. According to PewResearch.com, the vast majority of Americans, 97%, now own a cell phone of some kind. BloggingWizard.com says 80% of Americans check their smartphones within 10 minutes of waking up. The average American checks their phone 262 times per day. 75.1% of web traffic in Nigeria goes through mobile. Here's one for the ladies. Women spend longer on smartphone apps than men. Women spend 30 hours, 58 minutes on their favorite apps on average. In comparison, men spend just 29 hours and 32 minutes on their favorite apps. Men win. That's not sexist. Let's move over to techjury.com. You might need to know in Germany, there are traffic lights on the ground for distracted phone users. And who is the leader in smartphone use? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it's not America. It's South Korea. The global mobile ecosystem generated 1.1 trillion in 2018. And finally, the greatest stat of all. In Finland, There is an annual mobile phone throwing championship. Thanks for listening to the Fat Check. Fact, fact check. Now back to normal programming.
Jeez. See, this would have never been allowed in the 80s. Let's see. Um, in today's day and age. Should I guess high? 10 times. 30. An hour? 30 times an hour they will check their email, especially these people now working from home because they're always looking for the next assignment. They're looking for the next next communication because we're separated. We can't holler over a cubicle wall. The average employee now checks their email 30 times an hour. Okay, let me convict you all if you haven't been convicted yet of these phones. And again, uh, the point of this isn't to really talk about smartphones and how we shouldn't have them. There might be a place for them. And you need to maybe figure out what your place is. But how many of you woke up this morning and you got your prayer time in? Me. Okay, I did too. But how many of you woke up this morning and instead you looked at your phone and you were just going to check one thing, maybe two things, and pretty soon, 45 minutes later, you realize, oh my gosh, I haven't done anything yet today. Oh yeah, um, we talked about this at our men's breakfast um, Bible study. Of oh well, I can't, I, I gotta, I can't keep my phone out of the bedroom. That's where my alarm clock is. Yeah, I wonder if this is the grand illusion. These are, the, I mean, this is the what the enemy the whole time was looking forward to for many years, is getting a device in our hands. And our humanity, the human condition, wasn't able to handle it. And all of a sudden, they got you. Well, they call it exponential times for a reason. I mean, we're accelerating towards something. Who knows? Who knows? It's very possible. So anyway, we're almost out of time already. Oh, my goodness. Can you believe that? Well, I can because, you know, this whole thing about the things that distract us, that's and the illusions. I mean, we didn't even touch about Hollywood illusions of education of only understanding half truths and partial truths of what we think we see is real and what we don't see isn't i mean the objectivity of view we we didn't even get into how blind we are mm -hmm. and how, how we, blinded how do we begin that conversation i don't think we do i think that's that's something that takes time and introspection and prayer of that truth to be revealed and that that we listen with our ears and we listen with our heart and we see with our eyes and we see with our heart what what this loving each other and loving this world that we're in is supposed to look like. I mean, Jesus modeled it. Jesus came and said, love one another. Love each other as I love the church. You know, it talks about in Corinthians, you know, husband and wives. If we just can can start seeing with our hearts, I think the objectivity gets real clear of what our focus is supposed to be on. What about you? What do you think? Well, there's a lot of thoughts in my head. Um, what is the what is the illusion or the grand illusion? I mean, today I alluded to maybe the grandest of all are these smartphones. At least at this point, there must there might be something you know to the tenth power that we're not aware of coming around the corner. That could be interesting. I won't call this person out, but there was an older lady in my hometown that I had a conversation with. And what I mean is I won't call her out. I just won't, you know, let you know who it is just to protect her. She was talking about some crazy story on TV, but I didn't know she heard it on TV. I asked her, and I'm listening to the story and it's absurd. I asked her, where did you hear that? Where'd you hear that story? Where'd you get that from? I challenged her. Well, it was on TV. And that was the first time. And this was probably 10 years ago, maybe not even 10 years ago. That's the first time I said, what am I doing? I have just bought into, I mean, not just for all these years, I have bought into that TV is equivocal to truth. There's, Many news organizations, and all of them are owned by five. Five companies own all of them. If they wanted to craft narratives however they wanted, there's nothing you or I could do to stop it. We've talked about this a long time ago, how many entities Disney owns from its theme parks to its television programs to its movie studios, and that's controlled by a board of directors of 11 people. All of those organizations have 11 people to answer to and one person in charge. So I guess what I'm alluding to is, is the media all of grand illusion? 
is any of it real? And how would you know if it is real? It's partial truth. It's like anything else. It's half truth. If there's a bombing going on in Israel, how would you and I really know that? We wouldn't. We wouldn't know. The only way to know that is... To be there. Boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. We used to say this in the military, boots on the ground. How do you know what happened? Boots on the... you, you You were there. And if you weren't there, then you wouldn't know. But in today's world, and this has been going on for my whole life, right? People say things, you know, I grew up in a small town. People say things and that is truth. It's because so-and-so said it. It's got to be true. And there's no analytics involved. Not analytics in the way we think about them today, but analyzing, you know, does it make sense? Is it reasonable? Because oftentimes if you think about something long enough, you would say to yourself, oh, that's not reasonable. So I, I hear, my thoughts are, um, again, you might think, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm way out there. I'm just thinking about what is really real in our life. We know that 10,000 friends on Facebook isn't real. You don't even know these people. They don't like you. You can't like someone unless you actually know them, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're going to take down religion, and that's what this whole thing is really about, and let's get back to that for a second. If you're going to take out religion... You have to create this perception that there is no God. You can't bomb churches. It won't work. We'll rebuild them. We'll get stronger. But the 20th century was really the century of there actually is no God. There is no God. And if there is no God, like you said earlier, you ignore it. How have you seen the destruction of religion in your lifetime? You know, it's it's the go-to, like I alluded to earlier, the the illusion that religion is just given to me and that it's, it's my choice certainly, but that because I put in a half effort, I get the full benefit. And I know the illusion now is that that isn't how God works and that isn't his plan. And so if I'm not going to be all in, he's not going to be all in on me. Interesting. And that goes back to where I was at in high school and and college and going to church just because there were pretty girls that were at that church that I wanted to date next Friday night. And hey, Dave, don't don't overlook that. That's a good reason to go. <laughs> it's a reason. <laughs> it's a reason. God made beautiful women for a reason. Um, good church going girls. Um, <laughs> but the other distractions uh, that have just come along, you know, I'm a tech guy. Before I was a, a doctor understanding and seeing what the internet was and watching what it's become over the last 20 years and knowing at its roots what drives most innovation on that platform. And yet, like you said, now we are, or with these phones, we are our own expert. We can find any opinion to support our limited or narrow viewpoint, but that makes us right because somebody else on the internet put it there. And we don't go back to the original word and the original simple doctrine and text that says, this is truth. This is the beginning. This is the end. Alpha Omega. Here are my 10 rules. This is all you need to do to make it through this life. I love that book. Everything I ever needed to know, I learned in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Like so true. So true. And truthful. You could take that one way or another. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. How about you? Where have you seen the this this breakdown, or where has has it become truth to you that you were really buying into an illusion? Pre conversion. What do I mean? The way I saw Christianity through eyes of a Catholic, I thought to be a I'll just say it this way: good Christian but you want to be good, right? You want to do the right thing, be righteous, was going to Mass on Sunday morning. And if you can, try to get to confession Saturday night because there might be a mortal sin somewhere. And that was it. That was my perception of church. And it's a horrible illusion because what about Monday? Tuesday? Where's God on Wednesday? And I lived that way for, you know, most of my life. Most of us did. Now, you know, my mom, we had other prayers that we prayed. And 
Um, but slowly over time, the world got more and more agnostic or atheist and the Catholic families and the Christian families bought in and television got bigger and cable came around. And so my perception of Christianity was 60 minutes a week and not 170, how many hours in a week? 172? 168. 168 hours in a week. Well, I don't know much sleeping, but. You know what I mean? Right. Full time. Mm -hmm. That was shattered when I went on my first retreat. I realized, oh my, this is the life, not what I had. So I was caught in both worlds. I had one foot here in the world, one foot in the church, and I couldn't figure out which way to lean. Am I supposed to give my whole life to Christ? Well, the Protestants were doing that. Catholics weren't doing that. I did hear that from Protestants. But little did I know, Catholics were actually doing that. Some of it's semantics, but they were doing that as well. And so when I give my whole life to Christ, I realized either I'm all in or not. And I got to go all in here. That, that means money. That means career, everything. So I think it was pre-conversion, before I came to know the living God, um, church, this is the way church was. Yeah, great question. Sounds like your mind was very opened. It, yes, it was very open. And you know what? Thank God I had an open mindset, honestly, because people who have closed mindsets don't go to those retreats. They think these retreats or any retreats, um, they don't need it. I'm good. Yeah. But it's absurd. When is the revival again? March 25th, 26th. That's a Friday and a Saturday? Friday night and all day Saturday. You get a couple big breaks, though, on Saturday. Nice. Four hours with the breaks. And with your couple and with your spouse, significant yeah. other. Yeah, bring your spouse. Um, if you're not married, it's not a couple's retreat. I've heard two or three people say, this is a couple's retreat. No, it's for everybody. High school students, if you want to come, great. College students, we'd love to have you. Um, but this is an opportunity to get to know truth in a way that um, you have not known him, to watch God move the way God wants to move. And so there's not going to be jumping off of pews and running around the church without your clothes on. And uh, you know what I'm saying? People have perception of, oh my gosh, we're going to be praying all the time. No, there's going to be lots of fun, some funny things. There will be some prayer. You have to dive in somehow. But um, yeah. We're going to find and break through some of the illusions. That's right. I like it. Save the family. Takeaway? You know, I know we're beating the dead horse when we say it, but close the phone, be with your family, be present to to where you are. God's trying to talk to you. Always is. Winking, the still, small voice. It's there. It's, it's getting drowned out like crazy. And our family has an expression. You know, if you're not part of the solution, you're probably part of the problem. Here's my takeaway. Learn how to discern. That rhymed. Mm -hmm. I know you did that on purpose. Yeah, I didn't actually. It just comes out of me. It's learn the, to the discern. Poet. It's the poet in me. <laughs> but learn how to discern. It, 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 what's the beginning of discerning? Realizing that you're wrong much more than you're right. And you need another source. And my source is the person of Christ. He is truth himself. So I ask the Lord a lot, is this real? Is this true? And show me the truth a lot. And that's led me down, um, whether they're um, rabbit holes or open doors or open windows, a lot of those where I realize, oh, I had this wrong. And I think it's important to have an open mindset, not a closed one. Hey, thanks for listening to the Glenn Gower Podcast. You can find us on Apple, Google, YouTube, and Rumble channels. May God strengthen the bars of your gate.